Hello and welcome to Cutter Farms. We're back with another episode of UMRV, Upper Mississippi River Valley. And I have been moving the clock forward since last episode. We're going through August and I came to the realization that while we don't have a lot to do, uh, because we did make up all of our feed, our cows are being well fed at the moment, that we're paying a lot on these leases and the lease pricing is worse than our uh, loan interest pricing i'm at least i'm pretty sure and we've got a lot of items that are still on this lease to own plan and i think what we're gonna do since we've got over five hundred thousand dollars that we could take out with the bank is we're gonna take out the loan and i'm gonna go ahead and close out the lease on some of these vehicles uh, because I think the lease deals are worse than our loan interest and we're going to go ahead and see how much of that equipment we can get off of the lease balance sheet here by just cranking up our loan for a little bit. Uh, we've been doing really good. We're up $500,000 available now. I know part of me was looking at whether or not I needed to buy another field here to uh, support our grass addiction. But, you know, honestly, if I'm looking at the uh, different field types here, I was looking to see if we had any other grass fields on the map. That would be the easiest solution, but we don't. Everything is some other crop type, this dark green being the grass crop. So I'm thinking since we don't have another grass field that we could knock out here or alfalfa or, you know, clover, one of those other crop types that what we're going to do instead is we are going to go and mow some ditch grass up here uh, on the side of the hill or, or, you know, just some random field grass. And we're going to use that money to invest in machinery. Even if I could find a field, these fields are pretty expensive. I'd need 1.5 million, a million, you know, 900K. Uh, I'm sure there's some smaller fields somewhere, but a lot of them include farmyards, which are really expensive. So I'm not seeing anything that we're going to be able to easily buy up by our farm. And I really don't want to have to come all the way down here. Even this field is more money than we have. So I'd have to be getting one of these like really small fields that's a long way away from the farm. I'm not really excited to do that. This is a big map. So I think what we're going to do is take a look at our leased items here, and we should have some stuff that's pretty cheap at this point. We've put a few hours on these. I've got almost 13 hours on this uh, 9RT. We're going to purchase that. It's down to $137,000. That's pretty good. Let's go ahead and look at this. We've put 16 hours on this tractor. It's under 100K. Might as well get that off the balance sheet. And then similarly, these trucks were starting to put a few hours on, not a lot. I'm looking for the things that I've put a lot of hours on to prioritize here, uh, just because I think that's going to be our biggest bang for the buck. Uh, the combine we've probably got quite a few hours on now, almost 11 hours. Uh, that's not that bad, 155. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. And then because I like to be a completionist, let's go ahead and maybe get the headers for this thing. Uh, if I grab this, that's only 32K. And then we do have the corn head. I don't think I put as many hours on this, 1.6. Uh, let's see what that's going to be, 95. I don't quite have that much money, uh, to be honest. Let's take a look at the plow maybe. Only three hours on this thing. I do have enough to get that off of. Let's take a look. Nope. I think we're going to go with the plow. Because we're going to keep this thing. We're doing these cornfields often enough. Uh, this is going to be good. There we go. So now that we've done that, I'm really curious to see what our lease costs are as we turn over another day. I'm going to repay this amount back to the bank just to keep us on the level. And then we're going to go ahead and sleep through a night here. And our previous night's lease costs were somewhere like $7,800 uh, a night. Now we're down to fifty-five, dollars And our loan interest is still up there around $2,000. But honestly, that's not that big of a deal. We, we've dropped our daily lease cost by multiple thousand dollars. And our loan interest rate is, you know, only gone up a couple hundred bucks, which is great. And we're still making a good amount of money on the milk every day. We're at $30,000 here already. I'm going to just 
uh, honestly take this money back out. Let's see if we can do anything with this 55,000. We're just gonna keep going on reducing our leasing costs. How much is this truck? Four hours on it. Don't quite have enough for that. We've put four hours on this Artex uh, trailer already though. So let's see, this is down to 49,000. There's another great purchase for us. We're gonna be doing a lot of silage harvest as we keep moving forward here. So we're gonna grab that. And we are into August. Before I move forward, I always like to check my cows. Doing good still, doing good still. Plenty of feed. We're gonna move this forward one more month and we should have some more farm work to do now. And here we are, a lot more milk. We're only getting like 16.5 off of one of these. They used to be returning the same amount of milk. Let me just double check here. I've got cows in here. And for whatever reason, this pen is making a little bit less milk in the same amount of time than this pen is. I'm not sure what's causing that because we're at 100% health in both categories here. Um, interesting, very interesting. I wonder if age is a factor uh, in this. I don't know how uh, the amount of milk is determined here on the animals, but we're definitely getting less in this pen. Maybe it's because our slurry tank has gotten full. I'm not really sure. That shouldn't matter, I wouldn't imagine, uh, but we are full up on that. I know I could probably haul this up and sell it, but just looking at the time-saving stock check mod here for slurry, even with our 2.5 million liters of slurry, I mean, I'm going to say it only $150,000 for that. It's not a lot of money, uh, given that we'd have to get some pretty decent-sized equipment to be hauling this up. We'll have to take a look though. We might need to start doing that if that's what's affecting our milk sales. Let me just come in here and see what we've got for slurry tankers. I know there's a semi trailer here that can haul that. That one's almost 8,000 gallons, but we do have some of these other types that are even larger. I'm wondering, yeah, I mean, our big thing is bigger than the semi-tanker. The only difference is the semi-tanker can get down the road a lot faster. I'm trying to think about what we want to do here. I mean, it seems kind of silly to not be getting money for it and letting it go to complete waste. So let's just see Patterson Grain and Export. Where is this? I'm going to tag the place so that I can see it on the map right down here across from the grain mill down towards the train station okay well maybe we'll buy a semi-trailer and haul that down there if uh time permits a semi-trailer is about a hundred thousand so i'd have to sell almost all of the slurry we've got now to pay that off which would be a lot of hauls uh, i'm not sure about that we'll think about it but we're into September now. Let's take a look at our crops. We've got all the grass fields are ready to cut again. I think these are first stage, but these two should now be second stage. And all of our corn fields are now ready to get chopping. So I think we're going to start with the chopping. Uh, we've been doing a lot of mowing so far. And I do have a few stacks of hay built up at the moment. So I can take a moment to pause on that. And we're going to run all the way over here. I've got more haystack back here I forgot about. And uh, we're going to grab this forage harvester. We're going to get it all fired up, bring it up to the yard, fill up some additive, and then we're going to be good to go. Now, I uh, managed to dislocate one of my toes uh, in the last couple of days here. And that, on top of being sick for the last few days, I've not recorded videos for just a little bit. So if I uh, grimace and groan a little bit while we're driving here, I apologize. But uh, I do have a toe that is in pretty rough shape right now. And using the pedals is apparently a little bit painful right now. Uh, so I'm going to use that as my excuse for being a bad driver today. Not that I'm not normally a bad driver. Now I'm wondering if I had any silage additive left over from the previous season. If I did, I don't know where it would be. I don't think I did though because the silage additive in here is empty right now. I'm going to pull this up over here though. And we're going to hop out real quick before I buy some. We're just going to double check in the shed. If I had some, I would have tossed the crate in here. 
I don't see any. Well, that's all right. Let's go ahead and figure out where this is in the store. I'm guessing it's under pallets. I'm going to go ahead and just buy two crates. I know we're going to end up using it. Might as well have it. I can always get it on the uh, truck if we need to. And let's go external for this one. Got to figure out how to get backed up here. I can hear the loading, but it's not like smoothly loading the silage additive. It's doing it in weird 33% chunks. I don't know what the deal is with that, but we did load things up. Looks like we used up about a half a pallet, uh, which is fine. We've got a lot more left and lots to harvest. So let's see if we can get on out here to the field. I think what I want to do is we're going to head out and do the field north of the farm here first because that's going to be a lot easier for us to get everything up and running on and that'll also uh, clear out these fields because I think we're going to end up combining these fields like we talked about in the previous episode and tilling up some of this grass and turning it into one larger field. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I haven't done a lot of field combining of recent times but I would like to, and I'm just now realizing there is no corn up here. My bad. These are our beans this year. So I guess my plan of getting the crop off so that we can work these fields up and combine them is not going to happen this episode. That'll be a future project here. Let's get turned around and we'll head out to the field right across the road uh, on the south side there, and we'll get this thing started up down there. Now, obviously, before we start this, I'm going to have to also grab one of the semis and get that out here. But what I wanted to do is just get the uh, chopper all unfolded and set up so that when we're out here with the truck, it's ready to rock and roll. Get our pipe extended. And if I just pull up far enough to get the header slightly onto the corn here, I should be able to bring up our worker menu. We're gonna do a course play field work job. And here, I don't think it matters. I don't think we're gonna do lands mode. I think we're gonna just run normal up and down on this. Just that way I'm not dealing with cutting in a lot. And it does wanna go the other way here, which always seems odd to me, but given the curves, I think it the course is gonna have a lot easier time doing this than if we went the long way, then you got a lot of little short rows. So I'm gonna let it do that because we're gonna, uh, be a big fan of course play managing itself for such a large field and then as unrealistic as this is we are going to let it start to the first waypoint which is going to drive into the field a little bit so we're going to have a little bit of corn here in our driveway i should have set this start point a little further back i know this is not the most realistic but being a solo player here this is going to be the easiest way to let us get started and then because we've got two different trucks here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab our smaller one and put that on the smaller trailer. I'm gonna pull this forward so I'm not disconnecting on the grate. And we will be getting both trucks going here uh, eventually, but mentally we've paid for this Artex trailer. So that's the one I wanna put more hours on. So I'm gonna use that one to get started here. And then we'll put the bigger semi on the bigger trailer when the time comes. I think that makes sense to me. Let's get going. Uh, I'm not going to need course play for this at all. And when we do get going, I think it's this combine unload one. And the go-to point is going to be, what field is this out here even? 23? I want to say this is field 23 and then it's going to get taken up to the harvest store dumping location and i'm gonna not set this off right away usually i get the field open up before we do this just because i i think auto drive's going to run into a few problems on the headlands and stuff so let's see if this guy is going to be able to find the starting point here if I can just get right up next to the header. I'm hoping I'll be close enough. Doesn't look like it. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna back up here. I'm gonna try and get a little bit more on side here. This telephone pole is giving me some grief. I think if I can, whoa, this trailer dropped down a little bit more than I was expecting there. 
trying to stay off of this culvert. If I can just get backed up enough here so I can pull up alongside, I think that pipe will be long enough to detect the trailer here. All right, we figured it out. Man, we're getting a ton of chaff off of this field too, which is great. I'm feeling good about that. I'm just wondering how many trips we're going to need to make with the semis here just to get the field opened up. Maybe I should have gotten the bigger semi going just because I think it holds quite a bit more than this trailer. I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the numbers. Either way, though, uh, I guess I can drop all the way back behind the forage harvester when it turns here. Hopefully. Oh, a little bit of a uh, fender loving there. I do have to say that the uh, corn, the way the corn gets sucked into the forage harvester head just looks, uh, looks cool. I like it. All right, we're at 71% already. How am I ever going to get back out of this corner with the semi? That's going to be the hardest part of this, I think. And I think we will get the other semi hooked up when we get back to the yard. Uh, we'll unload this one into the harvester or get it started because it's probably going to take a minute to dump and then I will grab the other semi and we'll bring that out here and see how many yards of material that can hold compared to this one. It's easier than looking it up in the menu. We'll just do a real live test. We're at 98%, almost there. 90 or 100% at 85 cubic yards. All right, well, let's see if I can figure out how we're gonna get out of here. It's a pretty steep ditch right here, but I'm kind of wondering if uh, down here it's a little bit shallower, I think maybe we can sneak out down here. Realistically, I wouldn't do this. This would, uh, I'd probably tip this semi over trying to do this in real life, but I think we can jump the ditch right here. We'd probably get stuck trying to do this in real life, or we'll probably get stuck trying to do this in farm sim. Yeah, that's a pretty significant angle there. My wheels are completely off of the ground. Well, we've learned our lesson, folks, or have we? Have we actually learned a lesson? I don't think we have. But we, uh, <laughs> we answered the question, and the question is, it is too steep down there. So we'll have to be trying to figure out how to turn around on our next attempt on this. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of room there. Given that we don't have any other entrances, driveways on this field, that's going to be... A little bit more of a hassle next time. We're going to have to do some fancy turn maneuvers to get off of this field. That's all right. We'll figure it out. I'm excited to get this load of chaff into the harvester, though. Get that silage ticking up so that we can keep feeding our animals. See how long these signs are going to last this episode. Don't need to be running them over every, every time we come by, just for the fun of it, I suppose but it is very satisfying to see them go flying across the map. And as I said, we're going to try and just get this dumping in here. I'm not using auto drive just yet, but I am going to get that set up and going here soon. Uh, I was a little bit too far away from that dumping point, I think. So I'm going to back into this, see if I can get a little bit closer. Why am I not getting a dump trigger? No spare capacity for chaff. Oh, would you look at that? I didn't have this thing enabled. Hmm. So corn silage, we need to activate. My goodness, I can't believe we haven't been uh, making our silage all this time. To get the chaff to start burning down into silage, we had an entire silo full of chaff all of this time, and I didn't realize it. Well, that's very disappointing. However, you can see we're starting to burn through this now, and this is not going to go very far. Yeah, so I'm going to let that burn through, and while that's happening, we'll go get the other truck running here. Maybe I'll run us up to... 5x? I'm kind of worried about that rain coming down the line here, but we'll make do for the time being. I need to get the chaff moving, and yeah, I guess I'm I'm happy. We got a lot more silage than I thought we did, uh, which is great. We could have definitely used that a few episodes ago, 
uh, use that knowledge a few episodes ago, but I guess that's my fault for not paying more attention. We'll get this nice Kenworth move in here with some excellent engine noises. And while we're driving, I will do the same thing over here, get it all set up from a combine perspective. Field 23, dumping into the harvest store. And I will need to get the combine set up with field 23 as well. We're driving right through the yard here. Get on the driveway there, bud. We've got the semi out here now. I'm really curious to see how much this trailer is going to hold. I think it's going to be a lot more than the, I think it was, what, 85 cubic yards in the other trailer? Let's find out what this one will hold. We're already cranking up there, though. 10 cubic yards and climbing. I like it. And the gearing on this semi is a lot different, so we're in first gear here and not able to put the pedal all the way down. Gonna have to fine-tune my driving a little bit more in this machine than the other one. That's all right. Our top speed is a, a lot better in this semi setup. It's gonna be a bit more useful when we get into that field that's a little further away. We're already at 21% though. Man, we're getting a ton of chaff off of this field which is great we're gonna have so much silage we are gonna end up having to use the silage bags again i think with this much silage just to kind of keep going especially since we apparently already had a full thing of chaff in the harvest store um again a little bit uh, disappointed in myself for not noticing that but it makes my uh worry about our feed crisis a little bit uh, silly now. We've got tons and tons of silage. Uh, worst case, we can just feed them silage as time goes on, but I'd love to have enough hay to keep the feed going all winter long here. Uh, I know we're gonna get started on one more cutting of all of our grass fields here shortly, which will be great. And yeah, I think we're gonna get through the winter just fine now, folks. The crazy curves on this end of the field always throw me for a loop trying to keep up with something like this around them without crashing into anybody. I don't want to get too close to the ditch on this side either, but it's just easier to keep up with the chopper when we're off to the side like this, I feel like. I guess I, I don't know how far this thing will throw the chaff, but this is a pretty long semi setup with the sleeper cab and everything on it. Probably not the truck I would use out in the field for uh, pulling a, uh, a trailer like this just because it keeps you from getting real close up to the chopper. But it's the semi we've got, so we're going to make do with it. We're over 100 yards now and at 82% of our total capacity, which means we're going to really blow that other trailer out of the water from a capacity perspective, which is good. It'll keep the forage harvester going at nice in this field. Um, I don't know what we're going to get to total, but it's going to be a lot. And I'm hoping that we can get this field opened up pretty easily here. I think after we get the first headland pass off, I'll feel confident enough to let auto drive attempt to do its own thing. We'll see how that works out. And we're coming up here on full. We're at a hundred and... 28 cubic yards very nice let's go ahead and get this hauled up to the farm and see how much chaff we've managed to get out of the way Ooh, i think we're gonna have to just go ahead and set up the silage bagger right away and put a couple of loads into the bag while we wait for the chaff to move through that harvest store into the uh silage side of things that's all right. We're going to need the bagger no matter what we're going to do uh, because I think we are planning to fully silage both of these fields. I just uh, seem to have gotten stuck again. Let's see if I can back my way out of this. I think I just got the left side wheels off the ground a little bit with the way this hill works out. You can do it. Come on, come on. This trailer pulls a little bit hard with so many axles on it. It uh, binds up on the turns just a little bit, I think, and it's kind of pushing to the side. So I've just got to take those turns a little bit easier, especially when we're on a hill like this. No worries, though. We've got it, and we're cruising down the road now. 
get up to the farm here and see what's going on. Let's jump up here into the other semi and just we'll dump what we can, see how far it got. Ah, uh, farther than I expected, but I don't think we'll get the whole thing in there. Nope, not quite. We got a good chunk of it in though. That's all right. Let's go find a tractor and get that bagger going. We'll go ahead and grab the 7810 here. I should probably yank these duels off of here at some point, but I think they won't be in the way for this. We'll find out. This bagger's pretty wide already on its own. And I'm not sure what I want to do for this, but I'm thinking since the uh, loading point is on this side, maybe what we'll do is see if I can put the bag right here. And then I can drive on down this path. I think the semi can sneak through this garage door and then we could do it right here um i just want to square this up a little bit like so i don't want to hit the embankment over here though so i'm just trying to get ourselves moved over ever so much something like this and then i'll pull forward I'll straighten it out just a bit like so and I think that's gonna work really well. So what I'm gonna do is grab this bag and we're gonna bring this over. I think all I have to do is set it right in here. There's an arrow pointing that way. Now let's run over and grab a semi and see if I can sneak through here. This thing, it looks like it's made for filling something up. I I'm half wonder, is this an actual chemical storage tank? I don't see any display or it's it's just a visual thing, but it'd be really awesome if that was hooked up to actually work at some point. Now, the downside of this is I probably won't hook auto drive up to fill this bag. We'll run these manually for the time being uh, just to get started. And then once the harvest store is empty, we can run auto drive with that. Uh, but for now, I kind of need to just get things opened up. I think we're just going to open up this field manually. We've got a driver sitting out there waiting for a semi though right now. And at least this semi is going to be able to fit in here. I think I'm going to have to come at that a little bit different with the larger semi. I guess we could come at it from this side, but there's so many curves and whatnot. It's just hard to move these semis around. I was really hoping I didn't have to be much closer than this to get this to work, but it doesn't look like that's uh, gonna be a thing. There it is. We just missed it. Yeah, we're gonna have to get pretty close to this thing to dump out of it, which is okay, but going to take some finagling so we don't run into the tractor and everything else. And then getting back out of here is not quite as easy as simply pulling away. There we go, we got it. And I suppose I can drive through our grass field here. This is the one that's already ready to cut. So not really wanting to trample all of our grass too much, but just for a couple of rounds here to get things moving, we can probably live with that. And I am gonna go ahead and just get that other semi set up here. Uh, as well uh, but before I do that I think we're gonna try and let auto drive do its thing let me just do this uh, cannot find a refuel state oh I need to refuel okay let's do that we're right by the fuel tank conveniently there we go all topped off hopefully auto drive won't complain now off to field 23 you go and we'll go ahead and grab the Kenworth. We're going to not even dump any of this into the Harvestor. Give the Harvestor a chance to unload a smidge. I'm kind of curious to see how much the silage bag is going to be able to hold. How fast we're going to start filling it up with these semis. Uh, now, to get a straight run at that shed with this much longer semi, I am going to bring it up here and we're going to pull through by the silo over here. I can see the other semi is making its way into the field, it looks like, without too many problems. Uh, it's probably looking for a combine, though, that's set up with field 23. Let me go do that real quick. In order for that guy to do anything, we need this to say field 23. There it is. 
now the semi is going to find it. Not exactly ecstatic about it driving through the field, but it's working. We'll let it do its thing. Hopefully it doesn't end up in a ditch and everything will work out here. Sometimes if you want to use these auto drives and stuff, you've got to just let it do its thing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's doing it. It's fine. Now, my plan is if we can just come through here. I need to turn this into a driveway area instead of having it be grass right here. But I think we can squeeze in here. Yeah, that semi is tall, but not too tall, which is great. And much like the other one, I need to be super close to this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and get right up over here. And man, we're so much longer than that other semi. Oh, this is going to be a problem, probably. I didn't quite get close enough. Oh, oh, we just had it. All right, I'm going to try and turn this trailer a bit as we back up like this. There we go. That's not too bad. I can just envision some guy out here with a shovel, like, loading this into that belt for us. You know what would work great for this? is that Eagle drive over conveyor belt thing that we're using on the Edgewater series. That would work really well. You just dump right into the belt and then it would uh, conveyor it onto this thing. I wonder if I've got that mod installed on here right now or not. Let's go double check. Uh, that would be under belt systems. I do not have that mod installed. That's unfortunate. That would be a really easy way to solve this problem, I'm thinking. Oh, there's some vehicle leasing costs running the forage harvester out in the field there. That's okay. That's just reducing the price that we're going to be able to buy it for eventually here. I don't feel too bad about that. And we are going to back up a little bit so I can get closer to the fence here. Hopefully without hitting it. Oh, we made it. I was worried I was going to hit the front of the tractor there. All right. Now I have the other semi set up to go to the harvest store when it gets full. This semi we're going to manually run over here and keep filling the bagger, I think, is my plan. And I thought I can keep up as well as auto drive can on driving back and forth to the chopper here. Oh, that would be a... Miracle. We'll see. Especially since it's got the smaller trailer there. But also, I don't think we're going to be able to keep up with the harvestor on keeping the trailer moving. I think the trailer's going to get over there and not have enough space to dump into the harvestor and get backed up. So I'm going to do my best here. We'll see how it goes. Oh no, it looks like we got hung up on the telephone pole here. So I'm going to pull past the driveway so I'm not in the way for a minute. And we're going to help this worker figure things out. We almost got most of the way around the field here. And since we're driving it already, I'm just going to keep going here until we get full and then I think I'll just let this guy sit for a minute we're still moving the clock forward I'm really nervous about that rain coming though I'm hoping we don't get rained out for a, a big part of the day we do have three game days in which we can get all of this work done before we're starting to get inefficient so I'm not too worried about it I just hate when there's rain coming and we're trying to get work done in the field finally. And we're all full up here right as we get around the corner. I'm going to back this thing up to the corner. That way we can get out of this field more easily. And I feel like in real life this is low spot would get wet and this would be a great spot to get trucks stuck. I would not want to be stopping down there with a full load of silage or trying to back up and turn around. That just seems like it'd be a mess. We'd be pulling trucks out of the mud all day long. Uh, instead of walking up there, I might as well drive this up to the driveway, right? No sense leaving it down here uh, at the bottom of the hill. We've got the momentum now. And honestly, you know what? No sense really leaving it in the field at all. We might as well just send it up to the farm, even if we know it's not going to be able to fully unload. We'll get it up there anyway. And we'll just back this guy past the driveway again. And into the field we go. Well, let's keep this chopper moving. Now it occurs to me that I can actually turn this on and we'll just let the semi uh, run with the forage harvester here with the worker and I'll go up to the farm and we'll grab this guy before he tries to dump into the harvest store we're gonna go unload this into the silage bag right away 
That way we can kind of keep things moving. I'll fake out the uh, worker thing and we'll just be the guy up in the yard here directing the trucks while the workers just drive them out in the field. It should work out for us here. I'm trying to figure out how we make such a wide turn. I, again, I should be going in the other way, but this truck is just short enough that I can do these crazy turns and get into this without running into anything, I say as I run into something. And I can't wait to see how many more semis I get into this. I feel like we're not going to get very many more into this bag. And I should have started this bag a little bit further over so that I could get two bags lined up here. That would have been smarter. Because there's just enough room here, I think, for a second bag. We might have to use a little bit of our magic super strength to move this bag over just so that I know if I can get to here or not. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Maybe I'll just put, do it the right way. We'll put a second bag in here, but I'll just start it a little bit further down here. I'll have to move this baler out of the way, though. I wonder if I could move the baler out of the way with the truck. Let's try that real quick. But to do that, I got to get this trailer off of the truck, which means I've got to put this trailer away somewhere that we're not going to run into it because I do think I want to get the mower running. We can do that concurrently. We've got a lot of seasonal workers here available to us. We can hire somebody to run that mower and start getting our grass fields going. That's my favorite part of this time of year is there's so many jobs going on you don't get kind of trapped into just doing one thing. Oh, we just bumped the side of that shed. All right, let's try that again. All right, we'll disconnect this right here. And I'm going to sneak up here, and we're going to see if we can get that baler. Man, I'm zoomed so far out for some reason. Let's try this. Have a little bit easier time if my truck goes into microscopic. Someday we'll get, like, in-cab backup cameras and stuff like we've got in real life. Or things like this. It'll be a lot of fun. We're going to take the baler, and I'm going to just drop that right over here. I'm not going to need that trailer again until we need the baler again. So it won't hurt if this baler ends up a little bit in front of it. But I guess I've got plenty of room. I can just put it to the side just in case. You never know. Now we're spending an awful lot of time doing all this stuff. I am sure that other semi is already done doing what it's doing and on its way back up to the farm if it's not there already. I think it's gonna be better off if we just get this all moving right out of the gate. Uh, hang on, just in case this thing counts as a harvester or something weird, we're gonna turn this off altogether. We're gonna put that over to farm hay field. And let's go delete to open up the course play menu. Let's hop out here in the field. We'll create a job. It's all out there and ready to go. Course generation. Generate. It's got its thing. First waypoint. You do you. Oh, and just checking out here. It's not quite full yet, so we're going to have time to hop over here. Now, this didn't finish emptying. Of course it didn't. Is our bag actually full or did it just... No, it just got queued up. We can dump out of the semi faster than the bag could unload it. That's okay actually makes sense and I think I just nubbed that fence there we are well now the race is on even with all that messing around I think we'll get back out to the field before that semi gets up to the farm I'd love to intercept it and uh, have it come in the right driveway so we're gonna try our best to race on down here and catch up with it oh that auger is in the way okay we're not gonna succeed I've gotta we've gotta go deal with this out of the way. Oh no! Impatient workers. There we go. Alright, now the race is truly on. I'm gonna go out the closest driveway to me here. We're gonna bump this up a couple of gears. I just want to get out here before that semi makes its way past the other driveway entrance. All right, I don't see him on the road yet. Based on how full he was, I would have expected to see that semi coming out here already. Well, what I'm going to do is go ahead and start this worker off. 
it'll get to the field and handle itself. <laughs> and we're gonna tab over to the other semi. This, folks, would be why it didn't make it. All right, we've yanked it out. <laughs> Auto drive is gonna cut through the middle of my field, unfortunately. Um, I'm gonna let it finish because I do have crop destruction on. So as soon as I take over, it would start wrecking all these crops. Uh, I'm curious if anybody in the comments could let me know. There's a mod, I think, that will let you like hook up a chain or something to the front of something and pull it out manually uh, using like actual game mechanics. I think I would love to have to start doing stuff like that. I don't know. You guys let me know uh, if you'd rather see me like have to drag a tractor out here and pull it out of the ditch using a chain or something. Uh, or if you'd prefer if I just super strength it out and keep the game moving here. Uh, I, I could go either way myself. It, I think it might be fun to play around with at some point. And it's not like I'd have to manufacture a case for something to be stuck. We tend to get something stuck at least once an episode, I feel like. And uh, yeah, it might be a fun change of pace. So uh, let me know if you, that's something you'd like to see. And also let me know what, what that mod is. I've seen it around, but I don't think I've ever used it. So I'd love to get my hands on that and play around with it at some point. Now I am gonna bring this out here. We're gonna, hopefully we didn't take out the mailbox. Hopefully, yeah, it's good. We're gonna get this going through here and this should top off that silage bang, which is, Good. We're getting lots of silage, and then we'll have to see if the next semi can actually go completely into that harvest store or not. See if I can do this a little bit better this time. I'm not sure how putting a second bag to the left of this is going to work, but that'll be a new interesting challenge. I think I'm just, yeah, pushing on the tractor tires here. I wonder if I hop in here if I can see how full it is. Oh, the silage is actually already 100% full. We're filling up the whatchamajigger now. That's unfortunate. I wonder if that's going to hold even after I disconnect and put a new bag on it. Well, I guess we're about to find out. Let me get this semi backed up out of the way a little bit, though. If I can just squeeze down this way. There we go. That was easier than I expected. And I'm going to try and just line this up right alongside the other one and maybe even right right here would be good that's i'm far enough forward i think that i can get over here with the semi let's get this other bag over here the second i attach this bag it's gonna start dumping unfortunately uh, and that's gonna make it impossible to move this around oh no it did it before i even hooked it up that's extra unfortunate I gotta hurry to move this because once it starts to get full, it's absolutely impossible to drag this thing around. So in looking at this, I really think I need this ag bag to be a little bit further forward. So we're gonna struggle. It's not letting me turn it very well, but I'm gonna struggle to try and uh, pull this forward a bit. There, like that. Let's try it, folks. There's only one way to find out. There it is, we got it. I'd be worried about this, except it's only going to be, like, two more semi-loads that we can even get into this thing. It's funny, this thing has a buffer on it of chaff in the hopper that's filling up faster than the bag is filling up. Will we get it all in before the semi's empty? We will. Perfect. Well, let's go ahead and get this semi moving. We gotta finish opening up this field. One more load here, folks. Yeah, apparently this semi never made it out to the forage harvester. We are, once again, all hung up on things and on the wrong side of the ditch. How does that even happen, folks? I don't even know. Oh my goodness, why is it turning to the... Oh, auto drive is still on. Auto drive, seriously. This is one of those things where I know I should open up two passes first before oh my goodness before starting auto drive i just know it. i i know these things but i do it anyway and then we pay the price we are going to manually drive this guy around all the crazy corners here <laughs> it just pains me so much to see the other semi trailer in the ditch like that all right so now that i'm going the right way i'm gonna go ahead and let this guy do his thing uh maybe we're gonna turn this one off, and I think that semi'll take over. Yep. Now let's see if I can back this out of here. No, we're we're done. Oh no, what's going on? Please no. 
Please don't do it. I see you circling around. Don't go in the ditch, please. I can't watch. All right, he did not go in the ditch. That's good, at least. All right, well, that guy's going. Let's take a quick look now at our production menu. I'm just curious. We've got quite a bit of room in the chaff uh, here now to take us at least a semi. We're getting quite a few yards of silage going, which is great. Uh, I do want to get back to making feed. I think my goal is to pre-make as much of that feed as we can. Maybe not super realistic to have months of feed pre-made. I normally do that fresh. But I think in order to keep everything moving here on the farm, it's going to be easier if we just keep making the feed. That way I can get silage out of the harvest store and keep putting more in there as we're creating it. Um, that'll be the best bet. And it looks like the forage harvester has finished its two headland passes and is going to go down to the end to start working on the long rows. And it looks like our semi might have gotten stuck, hung up, confused. I'm going to get this guy out on the road. Well, I think the harvest store is empty enough. We're going to find out. I'm going to send this guy back. And if he comes uh, all the way back here on his own, we'll know it's empty. Uh, I am now just thinking that we've got the feed wagon in the way here. So I'm going to fire this up and I'm going to fill it with silage since I'm sitting here. And then we're going to send this guy off to uh, load up one of these barns. While that guy's filling up, I think we can jump in this semi real quick, turn it around, and fire this off with the auto drive worker. All right, here we are. We're in the 4440. We got to get him moved out of the way. ASAP, that semi is coming through. And if I just hit barn B, barn B should be good. The semi made it. Oh, it is actually unloading. Man, everything's just working out here for once. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah, it got that whole bit in there. Let's take a look at it. And it looks like we've got enough for probably one more of these little semis in there. Um, I do want to grab the larger semi here. We're going to make sure that we keep driving this guy so that we can uh, take him into the silage bag back on the farm there. Um, we don't want to leave that half filled. I want to at least top that bag off. We've only got two bags right now purchased anyway, so we might as well completely fill those up and then worry about everything else going into the harvest store as best we can. The only downside with doing the field this way is the constant turning around. I'm worried is going to cause us problems. These big semis don't like having to turn so sharp all the time. Actually, I think that other semi handles it a little bit better, so maybe we won't have too many problems. I'm a little bit concerned about them ending up in that ditch every time. This guy's gonna get pushy and try and get in the way here because I'm not using auto drive on this driver. I could just let auto drive take back over for this semi, however, it was taking too long to turn around. I'm sure it would have figured it out eventually, but I'm hoping once we get past this first part where you're it's kind of steep on the turnaround here and the semis were having a hard time with it that will be in a better spot and the trick here now is to stay close enough to the forage harvester so it doesn't try and switch to the other semi when we go by front of my truck got full and I think the fill point is now at like the middle of the trailer so I've got to get a little bit further up for this to keep working well and here comes the rain now I don't know if this is going to affect the forage harvesters yield or not. Let's uh, get to the end row here and I'll switch into the forage harvester and we'll find out. Now this thing's at 97%. I think that's going to be good enough to have it haul itself back. And maybe this is a good place to wrap up today's episode and we'll just uh, shut this down and wait out the rain. We're getting low-ish on silage additive anyway. We're going to need to bring that back out so this is a good spot to wrap things up, I think. We'll haul this back up to the farm, get it dumped into that silage bag, and we'll see how things go from there. Hopefully, you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. That's all for today. Ketterk, out. So we're moving the silage additive in out of the rain here. And look what I found. More silage additive. So I guess I had the same thought last time we were done. I just didn't check the right place for it when we were looking to see if we had any. Oh well, we'll use it all up.